Hello, uh, today I would like to make a, a short video uh, regarding a problem or a doubt that a lot of my students have uh, had over the, the years. You know, I've been teaching biomechanics for so many years and uh, have this experience. So a lot of times uh, what happens is that there is some confusion about the concept of activation and deactivation. Although it seems, seems quite simple, to uh, understand this uh, basic concept. For example, if we have a, um, a molar that has to be uprighted, you need a cantilever, which will be something like that, and you act activate in this direction. And this is, is the word that we say activate so this is the activation force and uh, we all understand <coughs> that when we do this activation we will have uh, another force that is applied to this unit actually <coughs> I mean I made this cantilever a little bit too long so just imagine that we have an extension here and uh, we will have a deactivation for system that is uh, um, usually is what we say is the force that is applied to the tooth okay so let's call this activation and this deactivation so you see we have two forces opposite direction and have uh, the same magnitude now if you think to um, to the laws of equilibrium, this little diagram is, is perfect because uh, <coughs> uh, the sum of all forces and moments is equal to zero. That's very simple to understand. There's, there's no moment going around. Uh, but now let's start to think uh, what we have uh, on the other unit. Let's call the, the anterior the unit A and let's call the posterior the unit B. So in this case, if I want to know which is um, the uh, force system that is applied to the unit B, what do I have to do? Well, it's very simple. I mean, if you if you want to stay within the deactivation force system, you will start from this force. Let's assume that this force is 100 grams, and you have to find um, a force system which is applied to this molar tube, or if you prefer, even better, to the CR, which puts everything in equilibrium. Well, what does it mean? It means that um, <clears throat> since the sum of all forces and moments must be equal to zero, the deactivation force that we have, force system that we have in A plus the deactivation force system that we have in B. So we say D, A and D, B is equal to zero. That's very simple. So in other words, this uh, means also, of course, that D, A, is equal minus db well yeah because uh, <clears throat> if you want to if you say that the sum of all of this two is equal to zero this means that they are simply opposite so we have to find a deactivation force system in b which is the opposite of the deactivation force system in a but we have also to consider that we are w working in, a <clears throat> in the space and vectors, once they move uh, in the space, they are modified by the equivalent <clears throat> concept. So the equivalent, we, we have to consider not just the opposite of this vector, but the equivalent force system. So in other words, if I want to find out which is the deactivation force system, what should I do? I should find the equivalent force system in B.
from DA and then revert it. So that's not that difficult. But of course we have to know something, so which is the distance between the two vectors. So if I assume that this distance is 25 millimeters, well, the equivalent force system, I will draw it a little bit out just to, for clarity, will be 100 grams plus a moment, which will be like this. Beware, this is not the deactivation force system in B, it's just the equivalent force system of the deactivation force system in A. So if you want to find out which is the deactivation for system in B, you have to reverse everything. So what comes out that the deactivation for system here will be 100 grams and 2,500 gram millimeters. And actually we don't need this equivalent anymore. Okay. So we said that if you want to find the deactivation force system on the other side, what do you do? You move from the deactivation force system. In A, you find the equivalent force system, then you revert and you find the equivalent the deactivation force system in B. Okay, that's very nice, isn't it? Uh, but one thing you have to understand is that now this force system here that we have calculated is exactly equivalent to the activation force system in A, isn't it? How is it possible? Of course it is. I mean, now if I try to find out which is the equivalent force system of this force system here in B, I would find that in A it will be this force here, the activation force system in A. So, wait a minute, what happens is that I can say that the deactivation force system on one side is equivalent on the activation system on the other side. It's the same thing. Therefore, if I if I think which is the activation force system on this side, I would just revert this, isn't it? I mean, we say that the deactivation and activation force system are the same. Quantity and direction, but they are just, I mean, they just have the opposite uh, value. So if this one, the, the, if you revert this force system, you come back to this equivalent force system to this one. And this means that an active force system on one side is the same thing as the deactive force system on the other side. Well, why is, is this so important to me? I mean, it's important to understand it because I'm very much used to think freely to vectors. Just in my mind, when I plan my mechanics, I, I, st I start thinking of uh, very often to a force which is usually represented as the activation force system on the other side. Now we go on with um, the discussion I was doing uh, until the first interruption and uh, what I have tried to demonstrate previously is uh, this very simple concept. 
let's call this A and B. And the, what I have to say is that activation for system in A is equal to deactivation for system in B. And of course, also, the <coughs> activation for system in B is equal to the deactivation for system in A. It's, it's all the same. So, uh, once we know this, I have to tell you that uh, when I when I work with uh, my mechanics design, when I'm thinking of vectors and forces, uh, I have to keep a couple of things in mind. First of all, uh, you mainly think to deactivation force systems. Why? Because they are, these are the force systems that you think when you think to the dental movement. So if I want to know which is the force system that will apply this molar, I will try to imagine a force system like this applied to the CR, which will make the uprighting of the molar. Uh, and then I will think about the MF ratio and everything. Uh, so, this is, when I draw this, even if I don't say this, I'm thinking to the deactivation force system, isn't it? But a lot of times when I'm planning my mechanics, instead of drawing this, I do draw an arrow here. And this confuses a lot my students. But actually, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just representing this force system with an equivalent force that I draw here. And this force here includes all this information because by Drawing it here, it gives to me also the direction of the moment and the MF ratio. And at the same time, this arrows here represents the activation for system on this side for something that I have to apply to the molar. And what is this? This is just maybe a cantilever, maybe something else. But a cantilever, it's easier to be seen. But this can, this the same concept can be applied to any kind of mechanics. So very often, when I say, "Oh, guys, we have to apply this molar," and you see me drawing this arrow here, and they say, "What is this?" But this is do I have to extrude the canine or the incisor or whatever? I say, no, come on, this is just the activation for system, or if you want, it's the deactivation for system to the molar. And this represents what I need in order to make the upright into the molar. So this confusion is given by the fact that you see the force on the side of the other unit. And this confuses a lot of my students. But actually, if you think that activation for system on one side is equal to the, or it's better, it's equivalent to the deactivation for system on the other side, then you can understand why, to me, it's sometimes simpler to represent this force system like this arrow. Because if I draw this arrow here, I have all this information that is displayed here with the uh, force and the moment and the MF ratio. And it also gives me immediately uh, some information about the appliance I'm going to use. Okay, that's it for today. And uh, I hope this is going to help some of my students. And I might think it might be a little bit confusing for people who are not following very much my biomechanics lectures, but uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what I always say is that biomechanics is a wonderful thing and you should consider um, to learn it very well in order to be uh, a cutting edge orthodontist, some, someone who is really good out of the, out of the choir. 
but this does not mean that it's an easy thing. So you have to, to, to work a little bit. You have to learn. I've been studying biomechanics for years and years and years. And for this reason, I, I would like to now have, I do a little bit of marketing. Please do consider to attend our meeting organized by our association, Biomedi, in Doha, in Qatar, next, next year in January. And we will have a lot of... <coughs> Uh, excellent speakers and we will have three days of uh, lecturing and all the other marketing you can see it down here but it's okay I mean my main my main main uh, idea was try to solve this problem for some of my students okay bye bye <laughs>